I'm here at the first concentration camp in Nazi occupied Poland, a place called Concentration Slager Possen. It's estimated that any, anywhere between 4,000 to 17,000 prisoners were murdered here. And this would have been the entrance. It's intimidating, isn't it? It's hard to imagine what they would have been going through as they were making the journey down this corridor. And this bridge here, that did the cross on the way in, they were beaten. And if they didn't draw blood, they'd have to go back and do it again until they'd drawn blood. A lot of them, by the time they'd reached here, were unconscious. It's actually one of the most brutal concentration camps out the lot of them. It's really quiet and there's an airy feeling about this place. It's been renovated, it's been painted, it, it, but it wouldn't have always looked this clean, I'm sure. So most of the prisoners that ended up here were actually Polish citizens, the likes of politicians, government officials, insurgents from the First World War, teachers, priests, anyone that the Nazis seen as a threat and for could in influence the wider Polish society. <laughs> but also that included children that were in the likes of the Boy Scouts and the cadets. <sighs> now this cell here would have imprisoned over a hundred people at any one time. There was no lights, there was no radiators, there was nothing, there was no beds. The prisoners weren't even given a uniform. Whatever clothes they arrived in, that's what they'd wear until they were eventually murdered. The prisoners here in concentration slager Possum were surviving on less than 400 calories per day. And some of the prisoners were transported on towards the likes of Auschwitz and they actually gained weight, which just goes to show how bad they were actually being treated here. There's some really interesting artefacts in this room. Handmade cards. Rosary beads. Napkins. And here's some secret letters which were smuggled out of the camp and sent to the families of the prisoners. It'd be interesting to know what it says exactly, but it's in Polish. And here we have some more artefacts. Bread medallions. These crosses were actually made out of bread. And this duck here made out of a little bit of cellophane. By Monica Szeglowska. 
This will give you an idea of just how tight and cramped the cells were. There were 70 people in this one cell. With no light, no beds. It's, un it's unimaginable really, isn't it? Now a little bit later in the war, the cells improved. There was beds after 1942, better sleeping conditions. Now you may think, oh, aren't they nice, the Nazis? But well, actually it was, for their, it was for their own benefit. The reason why they supplied the prisoners with better living conditions was because some of these prisoners they thought were spies and held important information which they were trying to get out of them. Now when they were living in the poorer conditions, these prisoners weren't living very long, they were dying. So they improved the living conditions, hoping that the prisoners may cooperate a little bit more or they may just extend the life that little bit much, that little bit longer to get the information that they need out of them. Now this is the isolation cell and this was for the prisoners that the Nazis deemed as the biggest threat, the likes of politicians and government officials, anyone who the Nazis thought could have influenced the other prisoners. I'm at the top of this very steep staircase known as Stairway to Death. Now just for fun, the Nazi guards would make the soldiers climb up and down this staircase 10, 20 times, carrying a big rock until they were exhausted and they'd fall down the stairs. And in some cases, they were kicked in the face down the stairs and they'd die. Another cruel game that the Nazi guards would play with the prisoners was called the Polish Uprising. Can you see this hill behind me? In the winter, when it snows, the Nazis would pour water on it so it turned to ice and then make the Polish prisoners claw the way to the top whilst being attacked by the Nazi dogs, the German shepherds. But possibly the worst game was called Run Rabbit Run. The Nazi guards would stand at the top of this hill here. The prisoners would come out of this door here and they'd have to make their way over to that green door there. And the aim was basically not to get shot. If you didn't get shot, well done, you were allowed back to survive another day. If you did get shot, then oh well. Just another body for the prisoners to cart off. You know, all these, all these photos are really powerful, aren't they? But for me, this one here, I've seen this one before. It's quite a, a, a well-known photo of the Holocaust. And uh, I think it speaks volumes. Just the pain in his face and his face, the dead body and just the body language of the of the Nazi 
the Nazi guard who seems quite pleased with himself. Now this striped shirt here was from a concentration camp. It's absolutely mad to think a prisoner who mostly ended up in a gas chamber once wore this shirt. Number 10723. No name. In October 1939, it was here in this chamber where the Nazis first started carrying out the mass extermination of the mentally ill people by gas. And it wasn't Zyklon B, it was carbon dioxide, which apparently takes about 15 to 20 minutes longer to do the job. Here's the names of some of the prisoners that died here. You can imagine this cell here where I'm standing right now. People with learning disabilities, Down syndrome, autism, the mentally ill as well. They'd be brought here. A lot of them most probably didn't understand what was happening to them. They were brought here. They were beaten outside. They were made to come into here. The doors were closed. And the gas, the carbon dioxide was put into there through a tube. And 15 to 20 minutes later, it was full of dead bodies, which were then carted out by the prisoners doing the, the dirty work for the Nazi guards. So that's Fort 7, Concentration Slager Possum. It's a really weird experience being the only person inside a death camp. It is a little bit scary walking around. So as I said at the start of the video, anywhere between 4,000 to 17,000 people were believed to have been murdered there. But it's also believed that many more, many, many more are buried just outside the camp in these fields. Shot in the back of the head and buried in ditches. I know this one's been a little bit depressing, but it's interesting, isn't it? Well, it is for me anyway. But as always, remember to like, subscribe, leave me a comment, and I'll see you all in the next one.